we're going to start. We're going to dive into the word. But before, before we do that, uh, let's pray. Let's, let's pray really quick. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> I thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your sweet presence. Thank you because you were here and we were worshiping you together. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, and today, Heavenly Father, I ask you to talk to your church, talk to your people. Holy Spirit, touch their heart and take all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I want you to get your right hand, put it in your heart. And say, Heavenly Father, please talk to me because I'm listening. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. All right. So the past couple of weeks, we have been looking into the book of John. Today, we're going to go to the book of John in chapter 14. Um, but before we do that, we're going to jump to... Um, Chapters. I believe Pastor preached uh, last last week in chapter twelve. So today we're gonna go to chapter fourteen. But before I do that, um, the title of today's message is um, the need of obedience. The need of obedience. And I want to tell you a little. A little. Um, I want to share with you. For those that don't know me, I have two sons. I mean, two kids. A son. He's five. And a daughter. She's nine. And Joshua, who is five years old, um, sometimes when, when I tell him to do something, right, uh, for you that have kids, nephews, nieces, grandkids, you may, you may get related to this story. So every time I tell him something, right, um, let's say he has his toys on the floor and there's some snacks, some garbage of his snacks, and then there is his jacket on the floor, right? Sometimes I tell Joshua. And he's in that little age, he's in that age, I think between four and five, that kids test you, right? As parents, they test you. They, they see what's your limit, what gets you upset. You know, they, they, they're watching you. They're like, ooh, I can't, I can't do that. You know, like I can't say that because they're testing you. Yeah, they're testing you. So I will, I will tell him, you know, Joshua, come and pick up your toys, please. Uh, Pick up the garbage of your snacks and hang your jacket in the closet. He will come and he will say, okay, mommy, sometimes, right? <laughs> sometimes he will complain, but he will do it. He will say, okay, mommy. Then he comes and only picks up the toys. Leaves the garbage there and forgets about the jacket. So I come and then I say, Joshua, I told you, you know, do all this. You, you didn't do what I told you to do, right? And then he will say, no, mommy, I did. Look, I pick up the toys. And then what about the, the snacks? What about the jacket? And he's like, okay. But, you know, sometimes kids tend to obey, right, but halfway, you know, like not fully, right? And sometimes in our walk with God, sometimes we are like that, right? We obey like halfway, Right? Like, for example, God tells us in the Bible, right, the commandments, you know, don't kill. Oh, yes, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, I'm not going to kill. I'm not a bad person. Then God comes and says, don't steal. Oh, yes, I can do that. Yes, yes, of course. I, I don't steal. I'm not a, you know, robber. But then God comes and tells us, don't lie. <clears throat> it's a little hard. <laughs> And then God comes and tells us, don't talk about your brother and sister. And uh, it's a little hard. It's a little hard. But I want to talk today about obedience. Obedience. I went to the dictionary and I looked up the word obedience. And it says the meaning of obedience is a compliance with an order request or law or submission to another's authority, right? So now if we follow this meaning, right, we are under God's authority, right? He's our God, you know, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So we are under his authority. So what do we usually do when we're under somebody's authority? We obey, right? Like for example, there's transit laws, right? 
And then when we're driving our, uh, you know, vehicle, if there's a red light, what do we usually do? We stop, right? But what happens if we pass that red light? Or like I say when I'm driving, ooh, it's pink. It's pink, pinkish. Oh, let me go. <laughs> it's not red. It's not yellow. It's pink. <laughs> but what, what happens if we do that, right? A police will come. Will stop us, will give us a ticket, right? And we will have to face, right, the consequences of our disobedience. We didn't obey the law, you know, and we will have to face the consequences. The obedience is so important, so important, because that's one of the reasons that Adam and Eve, you know, they sinned because of their disobedience. They didn't obey God, you know, what God told them to do. So I want to take you through the Bible with four stories. There's four stories. There's much more uh, about obedience, but I picked these four because they, 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 they were really, they, they were, they, they, when I was looking in, through, in the Bible, these, these stories, you know, highlighted to me. And the first one is Noah. Noah and the ark. We know the story about the, 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 the Noah and the ark. And <clears throat> when when we go to the Bible, we're going to go to Genesis 6, um, verse 13. I don't know if, if you have your Bible. Um, I may have the... Uh, yes, it's right there. Um, okay, so God told Noah right there in verse 13. I am going to put an end to all people for the earth. It's filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So here's the order, right? It's, he says... So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. So now Noah, God is telling Noah, make an ark. Because it's going to rain, there's going to be a flood, and we're going to destroy the air. So I can imagine Noah, right, thinking, it never rained. What is, what is a flood? Like, I don't, I don't, you know, the earth was just created, right? So he, he, he I, I mean, if, he, if I was Noah and, you know, how many of us, God told us, Oh, go make yourself an ark. I'm going to destroy the earth. It would be a little, you know, difficult to follow that order. But we see, that we know the story, right? Noah builds the ark. 40 days and 40 nights, it rained. The animals went inside the ark. And listen on verse 18, what, what, what he says. God speaking, he says, but I will establish my covenant with you. And I will enter, and you will enter the ark, you and your family. Right? So in other words, God was telling him, right? If you obey me, I will establish my covenant with you. Now, the Bible doesn't say this. But the scholars, you know, the people that study the Bible, they said that it took 120 years from the moment God told Noah, go build an ark. Until he finished. 120 years. Can you imagine that? Noah had 120 years to maybe change his mind and be like, this is a little crazy, God. I'm building an ark. And the ark wasn't like a little ark, you know. It was huge, you know. You can go in chapter 6. You can read the, the measurements. The, the, it's everything there. But it was huge. It was a huge ark. And then he had to put all the animals inside. He probably was thinking 120 years. Like, this is a little crazy, but I have to obey. And Noah did. He obeyed God and he built it. Abraham. Abraham. We, we know Abraham. When God called Abraham in, in Genesis chapter 12, the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Now, that order is a little bit more difficult because, you know, God now is telling you, Go from your country, leave everything, and you will be like, Okay, God, I'm going to obey. Tell me where. Well, I will show you later. You know what I mean? It's, it's a little bit more difficult to, you know, to do something like that. And then, and then on, verse, on verse 2 from Genesis chapter 12, it says right there, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and I will be a blessing. 
I will bless those who blesses you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So God was telling Abraham, if you obey me, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to make you a great nation. You know, like you have to be obedient and I will bless you and I will give you, you know, the nations. And So Abraham, it says that on verse 4, right there, it says, So Abram went as the Lord had told him. He was obedient and he obeyed. Praise God. Mary, Mary. Oh, I love the story of Mary. Mary, through Mary's life, you know, she's been called the most obedient, the, mo the most obedient. We learn how we're called to glorify him with our lives by being his obedient servant. Listen what Mary said in Luke. Listen to this. This is very, very, he, right there, God sends an angel, right? Now, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. So now she's going to have a, a son, and he's going to be Jesus. He will be great and he and will be called the son of the most high. So now Mary asked on verse 34, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, says, I'm a virgin. So now God is telling Mary, you know, his will is you're going to have a baby. You know, uh, Jesus is going to be the son and he's going to save the, uh, he's going to save the world. But now she's a virgin. So now the angel answered. This is how the Holy Spirit will come on, on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So now this is my favorite part of the story where in verse 38, and Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel depart, depart from her. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be how you say, God, I am your servant. That's the example that we should, um, you know, follow in being obedient. And now my favorite story, my favorite one, Jesus. Oh, I had to pick Jesus, of course. Jesus is my favorite example of obedience. We're going to go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And it says, from 5 to 8, we're going to read there. And it says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in, ve in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. This is Jesus humbling himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus knew God's will, that he was going to die in a cross. And he was obedient until the end. His obedience was more than even words can ever describe because he was obedient. Even, you know, before he was going to the cross, he told the Father, right, in the Bible, we know the story that he said, Father, if you can pass the cup, this cup from me, please do, but I want to do your will, not mine. So he was obedient, obedient. Now, there are, like, one, two, three, four, five, like six Bible verses in John, in the Bible, in the book of John, that speaks about um, Jesus being obedient. And everything that he wanted to do in this earth was to be obedient to God, to do his will and not, you know, his will, God's will. And we're going to go, we're going to start. And it's in John, we're going to start with John uh, chapter 4, verse 34. I'll read them for you. There they are. So it says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. John 
5.30. Myself, I can do nothing. Jesus, all this is Jesus speaking. I judge only as I hear. And my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. John 6.38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of, of him who sent me. John 8.26. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy. And what I've heard from him, I tell the word. John 10.18. No one takes it from me. It's speaking about his life. Right, But I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to, to take it up, up again. This command I received from my Father. John 12, 49. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I said is just what my father has told me to say. So he's saying, I repeat what my father tells me. And in John 14, 30, he says, I will not say much more to you. For the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. But he comes so that the world may learn that I love the father. Listen to this. And I do exactly what my father has commanded me. And I do exactly what my father has commanded me. There is a pattern with Jesus. He wanted it to do God's will. He wanted it to be obedient to, to the father. Now, there are three things that obedience may look like. Three. The first one is unusual. Obedience may be unusual. It was unusual to build an ark, right? Like, it's unusual to... Leave your country, leave your family, leave everything, and you don't even know where you're going, right? It was unusual for, for, for Jesus to go to the cross. It's unusual. Number two, it's difficult, right? Because sometimes when God asks us to do something, right, it's difficult. Go and love your enemies. Pray for them. Pray for those who persecute you. It's difficult, right? And the third one. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. But when we are following God and his ways, sometimes it, does make, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it looks that this stuff is a little bit crazy. Sometimes our mind will not able to comprehend if God asks us to do something, but we, we, we have our trust and we have the faith that our lives is under his, you know, he's under control of our lives and that whatever happens in our life, he allows it because there's always a purpose and then we have to believe that he has control of it. At the end, it's his will, not ours. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So I, I want to tell this to somebody maybe here. Like, when you go through pain, whatever it is, the situation or the struggle, when you go through pain, believe that the purpose of your pain through a difficult situation is for the glory of God. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat, but don't fall asleep on me, guys. <laughs> like, get, get some feedback. Let me, let, me, let me repeat that. The purpose of your pain through a difficult situation is for the glory of God. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Just always remember that. Just always remember that. That God doesn't send any pain or any, anything to you. He may allow it, but it's not it's just for him to glorify himself. So now... We're going to start the preaching. <laughs> that was the introduction. We're going to go to uh, John chapter 14. And we're going to see here, um, in chapter 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he's saying, on the first couple verses, um, he's saying, I am the way, you know, I am, I am the life. And then I want to I wanna start reading from verse 30, uh, no, 15. And, and we're going to read there because Jesus right there promises the Holy Spirit. And, and it will make sense at the end. Um, we're going to start on verse 15 right there. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. 
the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be with you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but he, you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in, the father, in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them in the one who loves me, the one who loves me will love be by my father and I too will love them and show them myself to them. And then we're going to jump to verse 23 right there. <clears throat> and this is very important. It says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. So how many of you love God? Raise your hand. I hope everybody's raising your hand. <laughs> Everybody loves God. Amen? Okay. So according to the Bible, if you love God, you will obey his teachings. And, and I have good news now. Ready for the good news? Obedience has its benefits. It has its benefits. I'm going to tell you three. But we're not going to obey because of the benefits. We're going to obey because of love, out of love for God. Because the Bible says that if you love God, you will obey. But here it is. Number one, an obedient heart carries God's presence. So when you're obedient, God is in you and it gives you like the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm going to give you the Bible verse right there. Acts 5.32, and it says, we are witness of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Praise God. So we have the Holy Spirit because of, you know, our obedience, our obedient heart. There is a version in the Spanish which is called Pechita. And this is the translation of the actual language that Jesus spoke, Aramic, right? That was the language that Jesus spoke. And it says, whom God has given to those who know him, the Holy Spirit. So know, knowing God and being obedient goes together. Because when you're obedient to God, then you know him. Then you know his heart. Then you know how, you know, what, how God thinks or what's in his heart. So in other words, if you know him, you will obey and the Holy Spirit will be given to you. Praise God. Number two, we can live confident without fear. We don't, we, we don't have to fear, you know, because we're following his commandments. We're following everything that God tells us to do. We are walking in obedience and we are obeying him. So Psalms 91 one through one through four says, "He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers, and he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection." So now, because we we don't live in fear anymore, because now we're obeying God. Now we are, you know, following his way. So when the problem arises, right, when there is a difficult situation, when, when the sickness comes, whenever that, whatever it is that happens in your life, when the financial problem comes or when there is a problem in your marriage, you know that you are following God, that you're obeying him, that you're doing everything what he's asking you to do. So now when that comes, now you go to, you know, the Bible and it says in Psalms 91, he's your protection. He's going to cover you with his wings. He's going to be there with you. So whatever it is, 
things that, that may happen in your life, you don't have to fear. You, you just have to know that he is under control, that he has you covered, that his wings is covering you. And it doesn't matter how bad it looks in the real life. Just know that he's protecting you. Just know that his wings are covering you and that all his promises are going to come to pass. And that fear has to flee in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God has control of everything in your life. Nothing happens by mistake. Nothing, you know, God didn't say, oops, you know. No, no. Everything God has control. God has control. And that's the beauty, beauty to walking with God. Because he is there just guiding you, just saying, trust me. Sometimes he allows things that happens in our lives because he's testing us. You know, sometimes he's watching. How are you going to react? Are you going to just, you know, um, be scared? Are you? He's just watching. How are you reacting? What are you doing? And he has control of your life and my life. Praise God. Number three, and this is, and this is my favorite one. <laughs> Ready? Number three. This is the secret of life. Most people outside, they said the secret of life is the pursuit of happiness or something, something. This is the secret of life. Obedience to God. This is it. There is not just like any recipe, like when you're cooking, right? What is the secret sauce? Well, the secret sauce, let me tell you, you have to be obedient to God. That's it. Praise God. That's it. That's it. I, I, I found out that that's the secret. And sometimes when we ask our, ourselves, are we being obedient? We cannot be perfect. Don't get me wrong. We cannot be perfect. But when, you're, when God sees your heart, that you have a, an obedient heart, that you want to be obedient and you are trying you know, that's what it counts. It doesn't, you know, you, you can make mistakes. That's okay. But are we being obedient of what, you know, God tells us in this Bible? Are we being obedient on our calling? You know, are we, are we doing what God tells us to do in the um, Great Commission? Right? Because that's part of it. Right? To preach the gospel. You know, to tell people about Jesus. To just let them know, hey, listen. You know, come with me to church. You know, if somebody comes to you, a friend, a family member, I feel sad, I feel depressed. Come to church. Let me tell you about somebody that can actually help you. His name is Jesus. You know, that's what he tells us to do in the Bible. Are we being obedient? And this question I ask myself, why most of us struggle with obedience? I asked myself while I was m making the, the preaching, and I, and I said, why is it that we struggle with it? And the only answer I, not the Bible, it's not in the Bible, I came up with, and I will share it with you, is that because sometimes we're selfish. Sometimes we're selfish, and we, and we think about ourselves. You know, and I speak about me. Sometimes, you know, um, we think about me, me, how do I benefit me, and how do I, you know, make myself better, me, me, me. And we forget about that this is not about us. This is about he, him, Jesus. This is about his will. Like, like Jesus said, I want to do my, my father's will, not mine. <clears throat> um, and, and, and we forget about that. And we forget that is his wills. Because do we, do we really understand um, about when we're, when we're singing, right, the songs, and there are some songs that says, <clears throat> take my life, it's, it's not my will, God, I want to do your will, or when we say it, when we say it, and we, and we confess it, that it's his will, not ours. Are we understanding? Like, I, I, I ask myself, am I understanding what I'm saying with my words? <clears throat> you know, your will, God, not mine. As, as you know, let's, let's, let's do it as in earth, as in heaven. There's a song that we sing. And, 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 and when we confess that, we, we, we need also to understand that what it means. 
what it really means. <clears throat> because Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, you want to follow me? This is what you have to do. Deny yourself. Carry your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Thank you. Carry your cross and follow me. Amen. <laughs> say, say, say it to, to your neighbor. Deny yourself, carry your cross and follow Jesus. <laughs> amen, amen. Praise God. <clears throat> That's what Jesus said. And, and we have to be obedient. Um, we're going to go to uh, in chapter 14 right there. And just to finish with this um, Bible verse. Uh, out of the uh, chapter 14 in John, verse 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. The Holy Spirit. This is the secret, the Holy Spirit. Because when we, want, we want, when we want to walk in obedience, we have the counselor, the guide that, of the Holy Spirit that help us be obedient to what God is telling us to do or, or, or you know, in the Bible, his commandments and everything, obedient in everything. That the Holy Spirit will teach us, it says right there, right, will teach us and remind us of all things. So, for example... Have it ever happened to you? It has happened to me. You're having a conversation with somebody, your husband or anybody, and then you want to say something, and then you hear, shh, don't say it. It's not wise. If you say that, this is what's going to happen. That's the Holy Spirit helping us to be obedient, helping us to be wise, helping us to just be a blessing to people. When you see somebody in need, you have that, 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 that in your heart, that desire to help them. That's the Holy Spirit putting it in your heart to help somebody because it tells us that's, that's what the Bible says. That's what God wants us to help somebody. When you have that love for somebody and you don't even know them or probably it just happens and, and you love your brother and sisters in Christ right here. That's the Holy Spirit because God says love your neighbor as yourself. How much you love yourself? You buy your things. You know, you go and buy your makeup. Well, I love my makeup. You know, just the same way you treat yourself, treat your neighbor. That's what the Bible says. And we have to be obedient to that. And what God, God just doesn't say, be obedient and I'm a judge and that's it. No, he sent us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes up on you and he helps us. He helps us. When it's hard, when it's unusual, when it's difficult, when it's, it doesn't make sense, the Holy Spirit is there. It's there to help in us, to guide us, to remember us. The Bible, you know, when we read through the Bible and we find the Bible verses, that's why we have to read our Bibles, right? So the Holy Spirit can actually remind us. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you remember Bible verses. Sometimes if you're like telling somebody about Jesus, then a Bible verse pops up in your mind. And then you know, like if you have the Bible in your mind, like an app, you know, like an application, you know, and you start remembering. And then you're like, oh, my God, I didn't know that, I know that much Bible. But that's the Holy Spirit remembering us, helping us, guiding us. And, and today, church, I want you to get excited because, you know, the need of obedience, yes, we have to be obedient, but it's not just be obedient and that's it. No, the Holy Spirit will help us. And that's, 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 that's so important and that's good news because we're not left alone. And, and today, I want, I wanna, we're going to pray. Um, I'm about to finish. But we're going to pray and we're going to ask um, God to help us be in obedience from now on. I want to challenge you, church, because what if it will happen? What if we all are obedient? You know, what if? You may say, well, that's a perfect world, Sister Stephanie. Well, no, we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be perfect. But we have the Holy Spirit that will help us. And, and we will accomplish that. We will, we will be obedient. 
just, we just have to remember that this is about not being selfish and, and think about that this is Jesus, about him, about his, uh, God's will, and about to do what he commands us to do in the Bible. We're going to um, pray, and, but before we do that, I, I do want to share, um, why am I doing this? <laughs> I do want to share part of my testimony. So it may raise your faith. It may, it may give you more faith. Um, it will increase your faith. Um, you know, when, when it was 2020, most of maybe most of you know my um, story, what I went through. For those that don't know, I had a goal in that year. God allowed in my life a sickness, a sickness that wanted to try to kill me, and it was cancer. I'm a breast cancer survivor for His glory, and and I want you to know that. God allowed that in my life to get me closer to him, even if it doesn't make sense. Because we remember the three things, unusual, difficult, and it doesn't make sense. Even if it doesn't make sense, he allowed that in my life. And I become, became closer to him in the process of going through that. I, I, I got closer to God. My relationship with him increased. Why? Because my faith, I needed to believe that he was going to heal me. One day, while going through the process, I opened my Bible. I don't know if you have done that. I recommend it because God speaks to us. When you open your Bible and the first Bible verse that comes up and that you can read, it, it gets highlighted like that. And it was for me. And it was in the book of John, 1310, I believe. The story of Lazarus, when God says, this sickness will not end in death. It's for the Son of God to glorify himself through it. With this, I, 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 wanna, I want you to increase your faith knowing that if God allows anything in your life is so he can glorify himself through your life that he can use your life for his glory that that anything that that the pain the suffering or or whatever it is the struggle just let God glorify himself through your life and you will see how your relationship with God it increases and it gets higher because that's 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 God. That's how God uh, uh, works, and, and 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 the passion that I have to share that is because your faith increases. So whenever that happens, maybe right now you're not going through anything, but whenever that happens in the future, you are going to remember. You will remember because the Holy Spirit will remember you that anything that happens in your life. There's a purpose and that God can glorify himself through your life. If God can use my life, because we usually say that, right? God, use me, use me. Okay, let me use you. Let me use your life. Let me allow something in your life. It doesn't have to be sickness. But let me use your life. How many of you want God to use your life? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And today I'm going to do an altar call. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, if you, you know, just to step out of your comfort zone. You, if you don't want to come to the front, that's fine. But I will strongly suggest it to come. Because this is what happens when you come to the front. You're here in your chair. Whatever is happening in your life right now, you, you tell, you tell that, that problem, you tell the problem, hey, just wait for me right now. One second, I'm going to go and go and 
be with my father, be with, with him. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to, to take control. And maybe when you come back to your chair, maybe that problem is gone. Maybe that sickness is gone. Maybe that struggle is, is gone. And then you come back to something different. But today I do want to um, encourage you. Um, let's be obedient. But we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. And the Holy Spirit today, we're going we're gonna to just sing a song. Um, really quick we're gonna worship him and we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to come and help us help us with whatever it is that is going through your life and if nothing is going through your life praise God just come and praise him that nothing is happening in your life and that and that you can you can be used by him and that can, God can glorify himself and let, allow the presence of God, allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to touch you because just one touch from God can change everything and transform a life. Amen. Praise God.